Hello everyone, this is Amber with Staying Crafty. Today I would like to share with you the binders that I use as my stamp indexing system. Uh, my system consists of two binders. This one is stamp sets in alphabetical order and this is um, stamps in categories. I'm going to show you the alphabetical order binder first because it's very straightforward and I don't have much to explain. So the way that I have done this, all of my stamp sets are labeled at the top with a label maker with the brand and then the name of the set and then every single image, sentiment, anything in that set is all on that page. So I've done that for all my stamp sets and this is also how I store my stamps. Um, they're all in DVD cases. They're stored just like this, alphabetical order by company first and then within each company by name of the set. These I only stamped on the front of each page. I did not stamp on the back. The reason for that is so that when I get new sets, this can still be in perfect alphabetical order. Um, so that's pretty much it for this label maker on the top and I did use cardstock as opposed to like printer paper so that this um, will hold up to being flipped through you know in the wear and tear on the holes here but I uh, didn't use super quality stamping paper I don't care that the images are perfect but I do want the paper to hold up over some regular use so now I'm going to show you what really helps me enjoy my stamps and that is the Stamps and Categories Index. So this one is divided into sections. Okay, first I have Seasonal and Holiday Sentiments and this section has kind of an index. Valentine and Love, Spring, Flowers, Easter, Summer, Fall, Halloween, Thanksgiving, winter, Christmas, and other holidays. And they are in order, but there's no page numbers associated with them. Um, so I can go through and look. So what I've done here, this is my Valentine and Love sentiments. I've stamped every Valentine and Love sentiment I have. I have a front here and a back to this particular one. And if you look closely, you can see that I've used a pen to circle around sets. So like all these pink ones here are from the same set. So I drew kind of a circular shape and then I've labeled the name of the set. This says SP and Company and Candy Hearts. So I know if I want one of these, I know exactly where to go get it off of my shelf. I did use different colors for the stamp sets. You don't have to, but it kind of helps break up the visual impact of so many things crammed on a page. Um, so that's that. Then after the seasonal and holiday sentiments are the rest of my sentiments. So my personal categories are birthday, tags and gifts, thank you, baby, congrats and good job, get well, encouragement, anytime, Wedding and anniversary, friendship, girly, crafts, domestic, masculine, sympathy, invitations, kids, sports, school, toys and games, cool and attitude, animals, food related, sexy, scrapbooking, graduation and retirement, inspirational and religious. So personally, these will, I don't think they're one size fits all. Um, a lot of them are relatively generic, like birthday but I think you should seriously customize this to your own needs. So the same kind of thing, you know, the, the circled images. So I'm quickly going to show you my other categories and then I'm going to explain quickly why I've taken the time to do all this. I have stamps sometimes in more than one category, etc. So after I go through these last couple categories, I'll get in a slight bit more detail about that. So now we're moving on to images. I have the seasonal and holiday images first, just like I had the seasonal and holiday sentiments. These categories are similar to my sentiments, but not exactly the same. I have Valentine and Love, Flowers, Easter, Spring and Summer, Fall, Leaves, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Winter, Snowflakes, Penguins, Snowmen, Christmas Trees, and Other Holidays. So here I have separate categories for Snowflakes, Penguins, Snowmen, 
certain trees. Why? Because I like tree images. I have several of those for different seasons. I love penguins, so I have a bunch of penguin images. So for me, it made sense to have a separate page for penguin images. This is all I have now. I'm sure eventually I'll get more. I love penguins. But I, I liked the idea of having penguins separate from other winter images. So that's one nice thing about making your own stamp index. Things you have a lot of or might collect, you can have separate. Okay, now I have the rest of my images. Lots of categories here. Birthday and party, baby, tiny, things to fill, food, fruit, food, drinks, food, sweets, food, other, animals, bugs, birds, bunnies, mice, get well, masculine, wedding and anniversary, domestic, crafts, women, accessories, elegant elements, sexy, houses, furniture, kids, toys and games, school, dinosaurs and dragons, robots, monsters, and aliens, sports, and inspirational and religious. So, same kind of idea. Okay, so all the images categorized and separated. And then one last category before I get into a tad bit more detail. My last category I call my basics. I have my alphabets, my numbers, my journaling tags, labels, and frames, backgrounds, basic shapes, and then this is personal to my collection. I have a whole set of stamps, um, a bunch of different sets that coordinate together from SP and Company called Mix and Match. And I'll, I'll show you that real quickly. Um, so here's my alphabets. Here's my numbers, backgrounds, all that. So then the reason I did this mix and match thing is you kind of build sentiments. Um, have a rockin' St. Patrick's Day, for example. So with all of these back here together, I can build my sentiment from whichever sets. These I kind of color coded and labeled on the sides. So this helps me get the most use out of these sets that are designed to coordinate together, but I wouldn't necessarily know what I had from just grabbing one of the sets. So you can do things like this with your own collection as well if you have specific things that coordinate together. Okay, so now I'm going to explain to you a little bit about uses for this and why I like it so much. And some other quick little tips. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you is sometimes I'll stamp a sentiment or an image in more than one category. I tried not to go crazy and give it every category I could possibly ever imagine, but a lot of stamps had two categories, occasionally three, but two to three was like the max and quite a few only had one category. But a good example of that, this is my thank you sentiments page up in this, oops, sorry, right here. Oh, you can't see that. Well, anyway, it says, you're as sweet as apple pie. So I think that's a great thank you. You're as sweet as apple pie, you know, thanks. I also put that same stamped sentiment in the category food-related puns. So you're as sweet as apple pie, same stamp right here. That way, if I'm making a card with apples or a pie or something like that, I can find that sentiment on this page, or if I'm making a thank you card and don't know what my theme is, I can also find it on the, on the thank you sentiments page. Having it in different areas helps me find my stamps when I'm thinking in different directions. So whether I start with the idea of a thank you card or whether I start with the idea of a food themed card, I can find that sentiment without digging around too much. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you Oh, this is a really good example. Okay, I made this card recently. All right, see these three different hearts? I knew I wanted to start with this heart here. I actually remembered I had that heart off the top of my head. On the back of the same page here, I have my heart right here. So I came looking for this heart, but I said, you know, I want to stamp three hearts and I don't want to use that same heart. So I used this one. I also found this heart. And then back to this first page here, this one. So I found three different hearts for my card to combine that look wonderful together by simply flipping to this page of my binder. I didn't have to dig through all my stamp sets and look through mountains of stuff or try to remember off the top of my head 
what I had because you know how it is. You get to a certain number of stamps and you remember some off the top of your head. I remembered one of my hearts. I didn't think of those other two outright. I don't know how long it would have taken me to find them if I would have found them necessarily, but it would have been much harder. So it's great for combining images or even just picking your absolute favorite heart for a particular project. Um, this was just a quick point I wanted to show you. These are my flower images. Nothing too special here. It's just I have so many. I'm sure a lot of you would have a lot of floral images. I've stamped front and back of this page and then moved on to this next page. The reason I wanted to show you that, this is exactly why I do not have page numbers associated with my little index, my little table of contents sections, because that way I can add as many additional pages for any category as I want, and even if later I add new categories, all I have to do is change that one sheet in the front, and I'm not messed up with page numbers and trying to rearrange things. So as nice as it would be to have page numbers, I actually personally didn't think it was a good idea and examples like this are why. Someday I may even have another page I have to add in here. I, d I don't know and I didn't want to put a bunch of extra pages just for the sake of it but I need the ability to do that. Okay. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about is how this helps me have more versatile use of my stamps. So unfortunately like I said it's hard for you to see. I'm going to attempt to zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, we're looking at this here. This is a moon and two stars. Of course it's in yellow so that makes it even harder to see. Um, but this is my images of baby stuff page. This stamp is actually from a Halloween stamp set. But I was looking at this when I was doing my stamp index and I thought, gosh, a moon and stars to me reminds me of a nursery and nursery rhymes and baby themed carts. So I thought, gosh, it would be really nice to use this stamp on a baby cart someday. So the second I thought of it, I put it in this section in my binder. And now anytime I'm working on a baby card, I'll be reminded I have this option as well. Typical day to day use, I would not go searching through my Halloween sets to find something like this. It would not occur to me. So anytime you're working with your stamps, even if you didn't do it right away when you started your binder, you can always go back and add things like that as you come up with new ideas and more diverse ways to use your sets. So I found this to be super worthwhile. I love it and I use it constantly. So a couple tips about making this. Um, it was a very labor intensive project. It was not quick. Um, if you want to really do this and do it well, you need to pace yourself. I worked on it two to three hours a day for, I want to say about a month and a half. And I know some of you are probably already like, well, you're crazy. I would never do that. And that's fine. <laughs> we all organize differently. I can be very um, obsessive about organizational things. But the truth is I'm using my stamps more. I know what I have, I know what my options are, and it also helps prevent me from ordering things I don't really need. I can see how many hearts I have, and if I see a stamp set online that has hearts, I can look right away and say, what do I have that's similar, or is it really all that different? Most of the time it talks me out of buying more stamps, but occasionally it's actually nice to know what categories I'm kind of lacking in, and when something might actually be a worthwhile purchase. If I tried to do this off the top of my head, it would be very difficult. And a lot of stamp sets are very versatile. You buy a sentiment set, it might cover five different holidays plus graduations and birthdays and it's all in this one set you might remember oh there's some pretty fonts in that but do you know off the top of your head there's a graduation one i mean i know i don't <laughs> a few of them i do but not my entire collection so it's a big project but i think it's worth it so a couple tips are just um relatively durable pages i would not use printer paper for this um you don't have to obsess over getting perfectly crisp stamped images. I think that's important because if you go too crazy about it, you'll never get it done. I mean, you're bound to make some kind of mistake when you're stamping this many images so quickly. Um, if you do, I don't recommend stamping directly in the binder. I recommend taking the page out to stamp on it. Um, part of that for me, because I did use a label maker, there's a little more depth up here at the top. 
than down here and that doesn't help but just in general it's things slide around and move and it's better to stamp on a nice flat surface you get at least a clean enough impression to read your sentiments and get a good idea of your images uh, I also do like the different colors because it visually breaks it up but it just makes it a little bit faster I uh, so one thing you might be wondering is if I have this system why do I still have my other binder well for example let's say you know, I want to make a birthday card if I look at the sentiments first and I say "Ooh, I love this celebrate it's your day well I'm pretty sure that this close to my heart set has a cake on it I'm not 100% positive but I think it's got like a birthday type image or two so now I can grab my other binder I can open to this specific set and I can look at the set in its entirety and I can say do I want to use this set as it was designed to be used together. If I'm not satisfied with what's on that page, I can go ahead and go to birthday images in here or go ahead and look at my die cutting images or other things that I might have available in my craft stash. So I think for me, it was important to have both binders completely separate of each other. I know a lot of people just do one, like my first one that's alphabetical. And I mean, that's great to a point, but it wasn't enough for me. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. I thought it might give you um, an idea.